any of you have been involved before? How many of you have ever been involved in the Great Ideas Competition before? Anybody? Just two or three of you, not many. Okay. <clears throat> the Great Ideas uh, Competition will be held in November. This is uh, somewhat of a precursor to our conference and competition next March, which is called Empower Your Dreams. So really, this conference is called Great Ideas to Empower Your Dreams. So, like I said, it gets things started with coming up with an idea. Uh, so we hope that this will be something that will work well for each of you as you start to get your creative juices going. Um, Paul Wilson is our guest speaker tonight. He's working to try and get some of the technical difficulties worked out. So while he's doing that, rather than me doing some of this at the end, James, I think I'll go ahead and talk a little bit about the conference first and some of the rules and what you actually do for it. Is that okay? So you all know what it's like? That's what we're doing. Okay. Uh, the great idea is, is basically, some people refer to it as a elevator pitch, meaning you need to be able to give your idea in the amount of time it would take from you to, to ride an elevator up to like a 10-story building or something. In other words, you have about 90 seconds in which to give your idea, promote your idea to somebody. So the winners and actually the semi-finalists and the finalists in this event will actually verbally present your idea in an elevator pitch. The first round will have judges, most likely they'll be judges off island judging these great ideas and they'll narrow it down to the semi-finalists which will be on November 20th and we'll have a guest note speaker that day and then the finalists will be at the 11 o'clock hour in this room I believe we'll have it here in this room uh, on, the, on the Thursday. Okay. Let me just indicate some of where these are. These will, these are all available right now, uh, but they'll be available on campus for those of you that are taking my class or other classes in the Entrepreneurship Center for you to be able to download. I know this may seem a little boring for me to read some of it, but I'm going to read a lot of it, just so you have it in your head at least one time that you've got it here. So, first of all, have to do with the rules. This can be entered as an individual or a group, up to four people. Okay, so even though it's an idea, it's not like the Empire of Dreams, which is much more involved with your plan and even some financials. You can't even have a group at this stage. Okay? Um, but only one person can make the pitch. So when it comes to that, getting into the semifinals or finals, just one of you will need to come up and present your idea. Yeah, I, that's not a rule. I'll read that. Okay? The, the idea needs to be submitted on the proof template by November 8, um, 2013, a minute before midnight. Okay? No exceptions. It has to be in by that day. Um, we do want you to consider sharing your idea with some other people to get feedback. Try and make your idea as good as possible. Some of you that are taking my 375 class, it's actually a requirement that you come up with your idea and then you share it with two other people and they give you some written feedback and then if you choose to, you revise your idea and submit it on the same day. So if you have to be in my 275 class, you will submit it both to the class and to the Great Ideas Competition. Okay, I know that's sometimes a little confusing, but it's really not too hard. It's the exact same problem. Okay? Um, all, all the questions on the, on the template must be answered. There's one question that says, they ask, I think it's question number six that talks about people on your team, uh, who are they and how they each contribute. If it's just you, just put NA, not put, but do put an answer for every question. Okay? The idea basically should be something that's new, better, cheaper, faster. Uh, that doesn't mean you have to be a, a inventor.
Um, so be sure you answer all the questions. There is a limitation as to how long your answers are. But you'll see, this is actually one of the templates right here. So this is available online. And it says, like, for the first, first question, what is your idea? No more than 85 lines or two pages. So what are you planning to do? Okay, the second question is, what pain or problem does your idea solve? Okay, it's just basically some pretty straightforward questions like that. Uh, they, you should do a little bit of research. So the third question is, what agencies, wherever you're planning to start this business, say you're going to start back in Holland again, okay, what agencies in your country or on the internet have you contacted to do a market analysis, and what have you learned from that? Okay, find out if somebody's already doing what you're already planning to do or something similar. And as long as you're doing something a little different and it's unique, that's fine. It doesn't have to be totally brand new invention something that is at least a new idea, okay? Uh, so again, what is, one of the questions is what's unique about your idea? So that's important. What, uh, what is the passion you bring to your idea? Why do you, why do you care about it? It could be that you're really frustrated with having to do this one stupid thing. You go, wouldn't it be easier if I could just create this little thing that makes it so I can just do this very quickly? Simply. It looks like we're almost getting here, so that's great. Okay. Some of the other rules is uh, whether the prof whether the idea is for profit or non-profit, it must be sustainable. Meaning that it should continually need additional funding and donations to keep the project or business alive. Okay? And when you make the presentation, when you're actually giving that pitch, uh, it will be for less than two minutes. Most likely it'll be limited to 90 seconds. So you've got to be able to only one person, is, as was mentioned earlier, only one person on your team uh, is allowed to present that idea, and only one of you on the team presents the idea to the competition. Again, if you're in my class and you do it as a group, all four of you present it because it's like the homework assignment. Okay, but for the competition, just one of you. This one, this next one, a lot of people have asked about, but if we try to make it simple and fair, there's no visual aids. So you are just speaking, no PowerPoints, no anything, unless it's a product that you have a prototype of. You can bring a prototype, but no food is allowed, okay? Just, we're not looking for just a new food product. Prize money, there will be prizes even for this competition. It's a little bit, it's a lot, lot bigger next semester, but we will be giving out a thousand dollars. So probably that will be, in, I anticipate it will be like $200 to the top. Uh, five people. We may get into a few more than that. So, you know, even for just a, an idea, you can, earn, you can get some money. And last of all, just remember that, there, well, there, related to that, the university has a little bit of rules. So if you're in a group, if you're, they're going to divide it by however many number of people are in your group, unless you put on writing, we want all the money to come to this person because it was really mainly his idea. Say that up front or it will be fine. And then there's just one last thing and that is important, is that all of you have signed the honor code, right? So don't use other teams' ideas. There's a lot of great ideas around here, okay? So we're glad to have you here tonight. Uh, there'll be another conference, uh, another workshop on October 10th. Uh, I want to have James Vaz stand up too for a second. He is the chairman. He's doing some videotape back there. So uh, let's thank him. He's the board of team is, I think, making sure that everything's going well outside. They're making certain people are signing up. Go ahead. Tell me if you already said this, but you can be on more than one team. Did, did he mention that? So you, you can be on up to four teams. So if you've got several ideas, you just, or your friend has an idea, but you need some of your expertise. This is, what we're hoping is that this idea you're going to start working on, and you're going to get one, you're going to find one first if you don't already have one. And you're going to start working on it so that next semester, as soon as this conference is over in November, you can begin working on next semester's conference with the $5,000 worth of prizes where you come up with a business plan. And in that competition, you have to have at least one partner because you don't know everything. You don't know the accounting and the idea and the marketing and everything. So you need to get other people on your team 
commits one and one commits the other. And you know what I'm saying? So don't feel like you're totally limited to just one idea. Thanks. Thanks, John. Okay. Uh, our speaker tonight, trainer, is Paul Wilson. Some of you have been able to hear him recently or might be taking a class from him. Uh, we're really glad to have him here on campus. And uh, I'm not going to say too much about him other than uh, we're really, really glad to have him here. He, as well as all the people in the Entrepreneurship Center, all of us are mentors. In fact, Logan, why don't you stand up the Browns? Stand up. And Paul, my wife, Sean, and I, we're willing to mentor you in your ideas. So our offices are right down this hallway here on the second floor. Uh, let us know and we'd be glad to help you out in any way we can with your ideas. But we want you to come prepared. Don't just go, oh, I don't have an idea. Try and have something so that we can have a meaningful uh, consulting time with you for your ideas. So we were having a little technical difficulties, so I don't want to take any more time. So let's welcome Paul Wilson. Steve, who 
passed away not too long ago, and he talked about wanting to put a, dead, a ding in the universe. Uh, make a dent. Most of us, I know myself, uh, I use an Apple product. I, I actually, for the longest time, was a, a Google boy. And uh, I converted over to the iPhone, and there's no way you'd have to buy this out of my cold, dead hand uh, before I give it up. Uh, and so, I want to talk about just the importance of creativity and the idea. First, I'm going to share a little bit of my story. Those of you that have been to my presentation or in my class, you've seen this picture here. Uh, this was, I'm the guy in the middle with the ugly suit coat jacket uh, and glasses. We, I started in entrepreneurism just like you in uh, college, actually a little bit before, but I really got into it. Uh, I <laughs> uh, really got into it in college with the business plan, just like what you guys are doing here. We didn't have the Great Ideas pitch, which I think is absolutely fantastic, because it really helps you fine-tune. Uh, so we had the business plan, and I knew I wanted to do a business, I had no idea what I wanted my business to be. So these three friends, they were all very good friends of mine, I said, hey, I hand-selected them, I think we can all do a really good business here. And we went over to Becky, she was the president, over to her house uh, a couple of nights a week and just played pool every night and talked about business. And when we first started, it was really difficult. I, I remember thinking, wow, this should not be so hard. You know, this, I should have ideas coming. And then eventually we came up with a very unique idea at the time. Uh, this was 1999, 2000, and wireless internet broadband had just really taking the stage. And so we decided that we were going to have internet in apartment complexes and the landlord would pay it and raise up the rent and we would just have the landlord. And everybody loved the idea and we won. One of, we entered two competitions. We placed third in one and first in the other. And I often, as I've thought back, back on that experience, I realized the importance of what we did while we were playing pool. It wasn't just sitting down and saying, hmm, what should we do? It was actually having fun with our friends. So, before I go into the next case study, I want you all to stand up, grab your stuff, and I want you to sit next to two people that you do not know. So we have three seats here. People in the back, come join us and be a part of this. Yeah, you still have to keep going. She 
uh, put a whole bunch of glazes. She actually tested a lot of different glazes to harden it so it wasn't crumbly and, and whatever. And uh, she ended up drilling a hole in the cow pie and dropping in a clock. And, you know, she, she is LDS. And so she would go to, she made it very, in a very politically correct term, uh, Relief Society spruce up. Like, and she'd get the, she would get a cutting board, she'd put the cow pie clock on it and put uh, hay and then have like cute little things on it. And uh, she would just give it to her friends randomly. And some of her friends found humor in it, others did not. Um, she gave it to her mother-in-law, which to me, like, having a mother-in-law, I don't know how my mother-in-law would take me giving her some cow pie. And uh, her mother-in-law gave it to Donnie and Marie. And Donnie and Marie, they had a show back in the mid-2000s uh, of the Donnie and Marie show. And they got on and basically showed her cow, cow pie clock. And Donnie totally made up a lie about how this came about. Like, just totally just, as she, as she tells it, he says, yeah, she picked up these cow pies and put it in her oven, and then she said, I should put a clock in it. That's not really how it happened. Uh, but because of that, and because of the interest of other people, her business exploded. And you can go to cowpieclocks.com and uh, buy a clock. Okay, she is sold to some of the biggest names. She, uh, I can't remember, is uh, the guy that, um, not UPS, what's the other? FedEx. FedEx. Uh, Fred, is it Smith? I forget. Anyway, and he's another great story, another case study of how his business came about. But he called her and said, you know, I'd like to buy this. This is where I'm going to get it. This is, you know, the whole thing. And, uh, and she's gone on to make her millions selling cow manure. And she has a whole process around it. Uh, so that's another idea. Um, quite unique. So how are my volunteers doing here? I'm glad. <laughs> how many did you eat, Glenn? Like 20. Oh. Uh, pretty good. Eric, how many did you eat? How many did you give away? Uh, my dear love friends. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason I had to who just eats my candy. <laughs> <laughs>
not sure if you have much. Okay. I'm probably the owner of some. No, 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 you're absolutely good. So, uh, the one he's talking about, Shimuru, is the current owner of Nintendo. Uh, he, would, he retired in 2002 uh, from Nintendo. He is the, so Nintendo, let me give you some background here, and let me tell you why. So I, I shared my story of the startup. I shared Cap by Clocks of the startup. Nintendo has actually been around since 1889. You know, we think of the amazing video games they have, but they started out as a card game. And they carried their cards and did a lot of things with cards. And so his great-grandfather was the one that started it. And came out after 1964, after the Olympics in Japan, cards just, people just got tired of them. They, they, they really took a hit. And so they started doing a lot of different things. They, they created what they called love hotels, and I didn't really look into what that was. Uh, but they, they did a whole bunch of, you know, just going outside of their niche, trying to understand, you know, whether it was uh, toys. They, they were at toys for a while, and they, that uh, failed, and they did a lot of different things. And then they hired Shiguru in 1977. And he is the reason that Nintendo is the way it is today. So he's a developer, and he's the creative genius behind uh, most of the games. Donkey Kong, which was their first real hit. Uh, Mario Brothers was his uh, completely. And he is the one that has been continually innovating Nintendo uh, to make it into, I think it was number 16 as, uh, it's like at 14.3 billion in the industry. So it's a pretty big industry. And so when we look at like the marshmallows and understanding, they could have continued on just doing the cards, just like everybody else is doing cards. In the late 60s, early 70s, that's when the technology really came out where they could innovate and try something different. I mean, it's really, if you think about it, it's not, not that far of a jump to go from a deck of cards to a game that's video. It's just a different medium. They're both games that entertain. Uh, but it, it took this young man to really take it and run with it. So, as uh, this is the marshmallow <laughs> idea of that, as I'm sure Glenn and Eric may be feeling. Um, so I want to talk about how to be an innovator. And I'm only going to spend some brief time here because then we're going to do some activities that generate innovation and creativity. So this is taken up from a great book, uh, the DNA, I, the Innovative DNA. The, the Tanner's lent it to me and I loved it. It's, I highly recommend it even though I can't remember the title. Uh, but really good book. And they, they isolate, they did a lot of research and they isolated several things that make people good innovators. And that's, as you guys are thinking about your ideas that you're going to pitch, think of how you're going to make a difference, how, how you're going to either impact the world for good or something that makes you very unique. So one of the first ways to do that is making connections. And so I love this picture. This is a lightsaber for those that are Star Wars fans turned into an umbrella. You know, saying someone looked at, you know, was watching Star Wars and they're like, wow, you know, that would be kind of nice as an umbrella out in the rain. Uh, making those sort of connections. Uh, looking at things and saying, I wonder if I do A and then I do Z, what will happen with that? And I, I have a, a YouTube video here, but I don't even want to try to see if the internet works in here, uh, of Ray Kroc. Who's Ray Kroc? McDonald's. McDonald's, someone said. Yes, so Ray Kroc uh, was a connector. He uh, was a salesman that sold uh, mixers, and he had a uh, this hamburger stand that just kept on ordering all their mixers, even though at the time people weren't buying them. So he went out and he visited uh, the place and just saw it booming and saw an opportunity to one innovate the mixers and two turn it into a restaurant, which is what we now have as McDonald's. So McDonald's brothers, they didn't want to go on. They just they said, yeah, you know, you take it over and run with it. That's exactly what he did. And so for better or for worse, we, we have McDonald's who has, you know, as it used to, used to have the count of how many hamburgers served, but now they just say billions of people serve because Ray Kroc made a connection of, hey, if we take the process of what we're doing here with the milkshake mixers 
and increase it and take the model that the McDonald brothers are doing, we can franchise this into something much bigger. So that's the first one. The second one, second one is always question, always ask questions. I love using Einstein here. Uh, Einstein, uh, there's a great book that called, is called Einstein Creativity. And they show that all the things that Einstein created, uh, like he had a spike. And then as he really started learning physics and maths and all that, it went down. And uh, who knows the story here? I'll throw it out to the crowd because it's a very popular story of how Einstein uh, figured out the theory of relativity. But you can, I saw your angle up. Oh, yeah, I think I remember he was like imagining that he was writing the way something like that. Like, he's actually writing the speed of light and all that. Yeah, so he imagined that he was writing a, a shooting star. And, and he started questioning, you know, what would happen if something like that happened? I, my business partner uh, is this sort of person. I, whenever we're doing negotiations or discussions, uh, his name's John Benson, and he, I will think of one question to his hundred questions. And he, and the, the purpose of him asking questions, and this is what I kind of want to hit here, is to really understand what you're looking at. And, uh, from his mind, like he, he is, when I think of an innovator, I think of my business partner because he has a garage and inside his garage uh, he built a flying car just because he wanted to see how that would work, what would be the best way to do it. And he asked that question and we'll hit on some of the next ones that talk about it. But idea networking is the third one. A lot of you are good at networking and this is what uh, I wanted to do with you and having you guys meet people that you don't know. So. Business networking, we talk to people, we figure out what they're you know, doing and seeing how they can help us. Idea networking is, and this is one of my, I, you know, I didn't realize until I had read this uh, that I was doing this, but I love talking to people and understanding what their passions are and really understanding uh, what they want to do. And as I talk to different people, I formulate different ideas and when I need help with different things, I go to those people, and together we're networking, having synergy. In fact, several of my students know if they come into my office and say, I have this idea, I'll give them 36 more ideas that can go along with it, and different people that they can talk to to help increase that idea. So I did networking, and uh, since we're short on time, I won't have you guys do it, but I encourage you here, you're sitting next to two people that supposedly you don't know. You know, talk to them, find out who they are, find out what their passions are, what they love to do, uh, you know, make a friend. Yeah, that's, when I look back on our, the reason why we won the business plan was because that's exactly what we did. Uh, we did it with the judges, which helped, uh, but we did it with every, all the other businesses that were competing as well. And they brought stuff to our business plan without knowing it. Uh, we would talk to them and we're like, oh, that's a really good idea. And, added it, and it really made us to the next level. The next one is experimenting. And experimenting, uh, you can do it, I think of it as a scientist of experimenting, but more experimenting in life. Uh, a lot of the people that are innovators are those that go outside of their comfort zone, travel. Uh, Starbucks came about because the, the founder was in Europe and saw exactly what uh, was they had a little cafe with um, the coffee and thought, wow, that would be amazing over in America. And it's because he put himself into different uh, cultures and people that ideas uh, stem. And so really experimenting and testing new ideas, going to different places, trying different things. Brother Tanner earlier today was talking to me, that, you know, just taking a different path uh, to school than you normally would take. Edison was known, Thomas Edison, the inventor of the light bulb, was known for uh, walking his employees, everyone walked the same path. And uh, he would always quiz his employees on what they saw on their path. And uh, so even if you're not taking another path, keep opening your eyes to what you're around. And you know, taking it and applying it to your own life. We think of Nephi where he talks about likening the scriptures unto ourselves. 
uh, experimenting, uh, being around other people, applying it to the current issues that we have, only expands it and makes it bigger. Just like with, with Edison, where he's trying to make the people that are trying to invent the light bulb. I mean, you look at everything we have in here from the lights to the projector to your computers to the camera, we have, and to even the uh, electricity, we have Edison to really thank for that. And really, that's what he was pushing for his uh, employees to see all around him. Uh, the next final one is observing, which ties into the Edison. And, uh, and I, I kind of jumped ahead of that, but it ties in both experimenting and observing. You can go and do, you can go and travel, you can see the world, but if you're truly not observing things that are going on, an experience that I had when I went to uh, China back in April, we were out sightseeing, and I noticed we were in Guilin, and I noticed that everybody was playing the exact same card game. If you come into my office, you'll see them. They look like tongue depressors with their cards. And, uh, and our friend who was with us was from Hong Kong, and I said, Stephen, have you ever seen these? And he said, no, I, I didn't even notice that they were playing something different. And we learned that and I went to the local grocery store there and bought all the cards I could find because that game that they were playing is only played in Guilin, period in the entire world. I had to hunt to find the instructions in Chinese and get them translated to even know how to play the game. So being aware of your surroundings and knowing uh, what's there and what's out of place. So those are the things that come from the book that I highly recommend. Uh, take a look at the book, but help you be a greater innovator. But for the last 10 minutes, I have some exercises that I want you to do uh, in your, I want you to be at least in groups of three. So if you are not at a table or four, that's fine for you guys to have here. Um, but Eric, if you can jump with, uh, there's a team right there that only has two. Who else only has two or one? Here we have, there. I want to break you two apart if you don't mind and uh, jump into other people because it's important that uh, you're with people. So let's do the first creativity activity. The first creativity activity. Uh, I want each of, instead of assigning you different ones, uh, I want you to pick a character up here. I have fictional and I have real. And I want you to think of how would your side or the person that you select uh, solve the nation's deficit of a lot of money. That's, as of today, that is what our nation owes. And so, I'm going to give you a few minutes. I want you to kind of come up with three things of how it's so if you're Papa Smurf, if you guys choose Papa Smurf, I don't care if you're double up here, you're going to ask yourself, how would Papa Smurf take care of this massive deficit? So go. Hey guys, I'm going to pick some random tables. And we have a few more activities. You guys are okay just going over just a little bit. I promise you this will be a great benefit. This is pretty much the rest of the presentation where you guys will be doing a few other activities, uh, but I'll make sure that they're not too long. So, Tom, your table, what did you, who is the character you guys picked, and uh, what was their solution? Um, we just talked about Scooby-Doo and how you investigate the situation, and uh, yeah. Okay, so Scooby-Doo investigate the situation. Okay, Alex. So we uh, had Superman, and we made a three-step process. So Superman would first make a sustainable solution by finding the root of the cause. So he would go in, take Obama, replace him with the Obama. <laughs> <laughs> Thus resulting in getting rid of Obamacare. After which he'll go to South America and kind of bully all the drug lords because they can't kill him, and take that money. Thus making a, a social problem a big result and turning into an economic problem. And as well as stopping by Africa and getting the child slavery done and making cocoa factories in the United States. And then become president of Anacus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alex is president of Anacus. Uh, anyone else want to share their solution? Well, we chose Superman, but we had different, uh, a different three step approach. <laughs> Uh, because it's so popular, uh, you have a fundraiser. 
system has called like population on Earth, and we divide like a, a very special you know space on the moon or like on the Mars. You know? <laughs> <laughs> from that is a transposition. <laughs>
process like so we came up with Rice Krispies of like making it because it's so light that you can and teach so part stuff. Of like a form of super, you know, actually you can make some parts here. You know, with that green eye stuff, and also can make some soup, you know, like your what's that? The neck thing. The neck thing, yeah. 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 Little girls love those things, yeah. yeah. And also for the kids, you know, for most of the people they can make long and like, serious stick for the children to fight each other and give it to the speech. Also You're not allowed to babysit my children at four hours, <laughs> so you know. <laughs> Definitely not allowed. So. <laughs> 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 All right, back to it. Oh, we decided to use Cheerios and make like edible glue and put like a bottle out of the Cheerio cereal so the like, kids could grab it and like dunk it in the milk and then like, eat it. So we make it like superheroes. That's cool. That's good. It was funny you should say glue because Brother Tanner was telling me a fact that he knows. At least that's what he hears that he once heard that cornflakes, the box, uh, it actually has more nutrition than the actual cornflakes because of the glue of the box. So it, it could very well work on what you're talking about there. That's good. One. I like that. I saw a hand over behind you. Um, we were talking about we can make uh, drapes for your living room out of the Cheerios by Maybe threading. Say it again. Like uh, window drapes or oh, okay. curtains for your house or something? <laughs> materials? My, so my wife, she actually, we have these flowers and a vase and it's full of uh, fruit loops just to add color and we've had it for years so yeah, that's very really likely. So that's very good, thank you. Any others before?
next workshop is going to be on October 10th, so that's two, two weeks from today. Right? Yeah, so two weeks from today, back in this uh, room at 7. So thank you.